lascivious lyrics, defamatory diss tracks, and medieval mic drops. Let's learn the fun side story of troubadours. As always, Fun Size History brings you compact history for your busy day. Let's start with another NSFW warning. <laughs> I don't even know why I do these. You guys should just assume all my videos from now on are NSFW. Let me bring you to the turn of the first millennium in southern France, around 1000 AD. Small kingdoms dot the land, and the Catholic Church is all powerful. While the kings control a lot, the Pope has everyone by the balls because he's Christ's representative on earth. Almost all of Spain and the Holy Land are in Muslim control, and the Pope occasionally uses his power to call in hits at crusades to regain those territories. This is also a way to get knights out of Europe because the real ones are not Prince Charming. Average people are subjected to nearly constant shakedowns. If you saw knights, you ran, because they're coming to take or burn your shit. Women, as usual, are relegated to second-class citizenship. But due to the Crusades, rich women were holding an unusual amount of power as they managed the estates of their husbands who were away at war. Along comes a prince, Guillaume, or William of Poitiers. This guy was Prince Charming, by which I mean masterful poet, smooth seductor, and badass who would push back when the church tried to flex their muscles over him. Well, he kind of helped people for ransom too, but let's just overlook that for now. William started writing poems and songs about deep sentimental love, songs that bragged about his sexual exploits, songs that insulted his enemies, and still others that criticized the powers that be. Some scholars believe that his poetic style was influenced by his experience on a crusade. You see, Islamic culture of the day focused on sensuousness, feeling, and the here and now. Whereas Christian culture was preoccupied with sinning, making up for that sinning, and worried about the afterlife. In short, Islamic artists weren't afraid to make beautiful art, often about earthly pleasures, and definitely not scared to get a little bit raunchy. William was a connoisseur of carnal sin and wasn't about to let religion cramp his style, which he proved by getting excommunicated twice. The second time was a doozy. This is what went down. William's wife went on a trip, only to return to another woman hanging out at their castle. It seemed he had abducted one of the wives of his nobles. Abducted because she participated willingly. Like I said, stone cold player. The side chick's name was Danger Rosa. You think that could have been a sign? Needless to say, William's wife was pissed. She asked the church to intervene, to force William to send Danger Rosa back to her husband. And so they sent a bishop to mediate. William's response? He told the very bald bishop, quote, a comb will curl your hair before I give her up. Damn. William's wife, completely humiliated, left the castle and died two years later. William lived a wild, contradictory life. At once, a doting lover, and at other times, a macho braggart willing to betray his loved ones. And he put all this into his songs and poetry. In many ways, William was like a hip-hop artist, expressing his lived experiences through art and communicating the raw truth of his life with no filter. William had become the first troubadour, the name for this new style of poet. And like hip-hop, troubadour poetry took off like wildfire, probably due to the real lyrics, somewhat taboo subject matter, and the ability to veil challenges to the social order and song. Let's get more into the poetry and what you've all been waiting for, down and dirty lyrics. A main theme of these songs was what was called courtly love, an idealized emotion of yearning for an unattainable person and describing them in flowery terms. This love was unattainable because the object of their affection tended to be a married woman. This was a time when marriage for the rich was more like a business arrangement with very young girls marrying middle-aged men. So it's little wonder that a young hottie married to a senior might have a straying eye. One category of songs, the Alba or Dawn songs, was a lament of two cheating lovers spending the night in each other's arms and saddened by the approaching dawn, knowing that once it came, they would have to return to their appointed social roles and usually the woman to her spouse. A real story or just creative imagination? The plausible deniability was precisely the point. But it is juicy to think that at least once the performing singer was the actual lover of a woman in the audience and he was literally describing their sexual tryst in front of the jilted husband. Lending to this deniability was that the troubadours would often refer to the object of their affection with a pseudonym to throw off suspicions and protect reputations. And this appears to be borrowed from Arabic love poetry. 
The woman was often referred to by the masculine term mi don'ts or my lord to confuse. Other songs called Sirventes were political and moral critiques to vent anger about the state of society. One troubadour, Martí, clearly frustrated with the hypocrisy of the priesthood, saying, Neither buzzard nor vulture can so easily detect their prey's odor as clerics and preachers sniffing out a rich man. Some songs even targeted individuals, devolving into insults that would make a battle rapper's diss track sound tame. The lyrics here are cutting, to say the least. They often accuse their target of impotence, homosexuality, and alternatively having a monstrous animal-like penis or being very poorly endowed. Make up your mind. One singer, Guillaume de Bergueda, apparently had a beef with a bishop and composed these lines. He f so hard and stretches her so much. Yeah, he used that word. So Giro de Jorba told me. He nearly split Bernarda in two. So we have the bishop and Bernarda engaged in relations, and then there's Giro, whoever that is. Adding an outside witness lends credence to this accusation, but also, especially when accusing someone of homosexuality, serves to preempt, oh, let's just say some suspicious questions. You said he did what? With who? Wait a minute, why were you there? What were you doing? Did you not hear the part that I said where my friend was there and not me? God. And then there was the pure unbridled eroticism and sexual bragging that would make anybody's jaw drop. Says one singer, Mar Cabru, I hunt in another man's private land whenever I like, and I make my two little dogs bark there. And the third rises up, leaves the fray, bold and eager to strike. For I am the bird who makes the starlings feed my young. That part about the bird refers to the cuckoo, which parasitically deposits its eggs in a nest to be raised by other birds. Hence our term, cuckold. We also have example of female troubadours or troubirates. And don't think these chicks held back. Eroticism saturated their words as well. With a common theme being longing for an escape from an arranged loveless marriage, we also get a window into a woman's daily struggle in those days. One anonymous troubirates writes, if only I could hold my knight naked in my arms until the dawn, drunk with my beauty, he'd feel like he was in paradise. Another troubirates complains about her husband. I'm pretty. I have not the least passion for him. I'm pretty, yet seeing his age, I feel so ashamed. I pray death will come kill him, and soon. Finally, though we previously saw homosexuality used as an insult, since troubadour poetry was a perfect tool for challenging social norms, we do see love poems addressed to the same sex. One singer, Henry the Englishman, wrote five songs, four of which were about his love for a man. He sang, demure boy, beautiful as a flower, sparkling jewel. If only you knew that the glory of your eyes has set my love on fire. And a true by Ritz named Beatrice composed a song for a certain Lady Maria, begging her not to pay attention to the men surrounding her. I pray you please, by all things that bring you honor, do not love those false suitors. Beautiful lady, whom praise and joy advances and noble speech, my verses are for you, for in you is merriment and delight, and every good thing one could want in a woman. So troubadour poetry was replete with nasty lyrics and revolutionary themes, like criticizing a priest's junk, sleeping with another man's wife, or having someone of the same sex catch your eye, and all put down on paper a thousand years ago. 2019, I think we need to step up our game. That's it for now. Remember, history isn't just kings and dates. It's the story of you and me, just in different circumstances. One big soap opera, and we should learn it that way. Become a patron at patreon.com <laughs> subscribe to my channel